All of the problems I work through in my videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. If you'd like a copy for yourself, just click the PDF link and you can download a copy to your computer. Also found on the website are links to all of my accounting videos, not just the ones here on YouTube that are publicly listed. They're also members only videos. About 40% of my videos are free and open. The other 60% are for members. If you click one of the members links, it'll take you to a page that looks like this, says members only content. If you'd like access to that content, just hit the join button. Okay, let's jump into the problem. In this series of videos, we are going to learn to prepare a schedule of cost of goods manufactured, a schedule of cost of goods sold, and an income statement. We'll do it over three videos, and our first video is all about the schedule of cost of goods manufactured. So let's read through the problem. It says, Outdoor Supplies manufactures gear for hunting and camping. The company shows the following data related to its December 31st, 2025 fiscal year end. And there's a bunch of information. And then it says, based on this information, let's do a schedule of cost of goods manufactured. Okay, the first task we want to do here when we're faced with a big long list of accounts like this is just to classify them because we want to know what goes where. Now the first pile of accounts here are all inventory accounts and I just want to remind you what these inventory counts are all about. If you're thinking of making a hamburger, that's the example I keep going to, raw materials are things like our buns and our ground beef, you know, our raw beef that's ready to be cooked. Work in process is when the burger's on the grill. It's not yet finished, uh, but it's, it's on the way to becoming a hamburger. And finished goods are our finished burgers sitting under the heat lamp. That is our finished goods. So inventory is going to move through those three stages as we make whatever it is that we make. It will go from a raw material to a work in process when it's half done and to a finished good when it's all done. Okay, so those inventory categories, and you again may have to fish those out of your question. Uh, I've given them right at the top of mine. The first account there, direct labor, we want to identify it. Is it material, labor, or overhead if it's a factory or a product cost? And if it's outside of the factory, if it's a period cost, is it selling or administrative? Those are the big categories here. And in this case, this direct labor, it says it is indeed direct labor. Factory supervisor's wages, the question we need to ask is, is the supervisor hands-on with the product or not? If they are hands-on, they may be considered direct labor. Also, in our class, we're assuming supervisors are hands-off, in which case they it happens in the factory, but it is an indirect cost, right? They don't have their hands directly on the product. They are supervising employees who do have their hands on the product. Company president's salary. Well, this is certainly uh, not happening in the factory primarily. This is happening outside of the factory. This is an administrative cost. Purchases of raw materials. This is to do with direct materials. Depreciation. 60% factory, 40% office. Okay, so depreciation in the factory. We'll start there. Depreciation in the factory. If it happened in the factory and it's not direct labor and it's not direct materials, it's got to be overhead. So 60%, get my calculator up here, uh, 0.6 times 240, I should be able to do this in my head, times 240, 144,000 is depreciation, uh, and that is MOH. Of this uh, 240, 40%, it relates to the office, so it's going to be admin. When I figure out that number, I guess that's 96,000 working backwards. Property tax, this one I can do in my head, 80% to the factory. 80% times 20,000 is $16,000. The 16,000 of property tax in the factory, again, it's not direct material, it's not direct labor, it's got to be overhead if it happened in the factory. So it is indeed overhead. And the other 4,000 is indeed admin. Sales commissions, well, those don't happen in the factory. That's a selling cost. That's a cost of selling. Uh, repairs and maintenance, 100% relate to the factory. Okay, well, if it's all in the factory, then it is all MOH. Again, it's not direct labor. It's not direct materials. It's got to be overhead. Utilities expense, 90% factory, 10% office. Again, how it's the, like the lights. How many dollars worth of light went into our 
outdoor gear, hard to know. So that's why it is an indirect factory cost. 27,000 is overhead, our indirect factory cost. 3,000 relates to the office, so 3,000 is administrative. Sales revenue, 2 million. This is a revenue item. This will belong on the income statement. And advertising is a selling cost. Okay, so we've identified all of our accounts. Now we gotta prepare the schedule of cost of goods manufactured, and we gotta remember, we are looking at this relationship. Material plus labor plus overhead equals manufacturing cost. It's the cost of the goods that we're manufacturing. So let's deal with our material. And the thing I want you to remember is with inventory calculations, and we're gonna do a calculation like this right at the top, because I can have inventory left over that I don't actually use, this, this chart, this for, um, schedule that we're preparing, it's interested in the inventory that we used. We want to highlight the inventory that we used. So we're gonna start with our beginning, and I'll, I'll use dates when we get to the problem, raw materials. We're going to add the three dots for a column, <laughs> any purchases of raw materials. We subtotal, and the subtotal is called raw materials available for use, raw materials available. We deduct our ending raw materials to get raw materials used. And let me explain with an example. Again, if, I, uh, if I'm a hamburger store and I have $50 worth of ground beef ready to go. You know, that's my ending raw materials last month. It's my beginning raw materials. This month is $50 of ground beef. During the month, I purchased $2,000 worth of ground beef. The total ground beef I could possibly use is $2,050. That's my raw materials available for use. Now, let's say I count the ground beef at the end of the year and I, at the end of the month or the end of the year, and I have $100 of ground beef left over. Well, that means I only used 1950. I had 2050 available, but I didn't use 100 of it because I had 100 left over. So my raw materials used is 1950. Now you're going to see this calculation throughout your accounting life. Adding, oops, <laughs> I thought I had my highlighter here. Adding beginning raw materials, deducting ending raw materials. That is a common theme in the schedule of cost of goods manufactured the schedule of cost of goods sold, and it is a common theme in accounting. We're always adding beginning raw materials, or adding beginning inventories, deducting ending inventories to figure out the materials or inventories that have been used. Back to the problem. So we're gonna start this with a title. It's a three-line title. The first line of the title is the name of our company, Outdoor Supplies. I thought it was suppliers for a second. Outdoor supplies. We are preparing a, not an income statement, a schedule of cost of goods manufactured. And this is for the year ended December 31st, 2025. Uh, some props are sticklers on this. They might make you write out the full date, not DEC, but December. Again, I would just consult my prof and make sure I was on the on, in the right there if I were you. Okay, so let's begin. And as I just suggested, we start with material, then we're going to do labor, then we're going to do over. That's how this schedule looks. Let's do it. Let's start with the material. And we start with our raw materials inventory and on the opening date of the year, which was January 1st, 2025. How much raw material did I have on January 1st, 2025? It is right here. I had $14,000 of raw materials inventory. I'm gonna add any purchases of raw materials. So what are my purchases of raw materials? I see it, uh, where did I see it? I see it right here. Direct material or purchases of raw materials, uh, $425,000. So let's fill that in. 
So the maximum raw materials I could have used up is the amount I had at the beginning plus my purchases, $439,000. That is my raw materials available for use. I'm going to deduct my raw materials inventory at the end of the year, which was December 31st, 2025, and my ending raw materials is right there at the top, 17K, $17,000. And our subtotal here is a key one. It is our raw materials used in production, our raw materials used to make whatever it is we make. 439 minus 17 is four, oh, I'm trying to do the math in my head and I'm blanking, 422,000. Okay, so there we have the first big chunk of our schedule of cost of goods manufactured. The bad news is I, I do think these are tricky when you're just learning, but the good news is that first like one, two, three, four, five, six lines, however many lines I have plus the title, 10 lines say, it's always the same. It's like, you just got to remember the dates and then you just plug in numbers. So it's not that tricky. You don't have to get creative here to be successful. That's for sure. Okay, let's move on to labor. And the labor, they actually gave us an easy job here. They just said, here's the labor. Okay, so let's, let's use it. <laughs> Direct labor. Sometimes you'll have like, various people's wages and you'll go direct labor and then you know frontline workers get this and uh, senior workers get that and you'll have a list of these different uh, direct labor cost flows but in this case it's just one item two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars easy enough two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars let's move on to our overhead Meh, let me write it all out i was going to write moh but i will not abbreviate here manufacturing overhead. And here we just list all the costs we've identified as MOH. Let me get a different color, maybe baby blue. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I said it that way. Uh, here we go. Supervisor's wages, 64 grand. Um, depreciation, 144. Um, what do we have? Property taxes of 16. Uh, repairs and maintenance, the whole thing, 15. And 90% uh, factory here, so utilities is 27, and that's all of our MOH. So those one, two, three, four, five items are overhead. So start at the top, factory supervisor's wages. Factory supervisor's wages. The amount, $64,000. Now you'll notice I'm writing lists of numbers on the left and totals on the right. The reason I do this is just a formatting convention. Again, consult your prof, but in my class, when we're listing out numbers, left, important totals, go to the right. Depreciation, 144,000. Property taxes, 16000 uh, Repairs and maintenance, 15000 And utilities, 27,000. So totaling these up, got to bring up my calculator again, clear it, 64 plus 144 plus 16 plus 15 plus 27, 266,000 dollars in overhead. Total manufacturing overhead total MOH. Now we said the cost of our product is where is this thing? <laughs> I'm totally off the page here. Go up. There we go. 
I wanted to look at this. <laughs> is the material plus the labor plus the overhead, we have added them together now? Well, we've, we've got them all on the list. We've got to add them together. So I'm going to add my material plus labor plus overhead to get total manufacturing cost. Four two two plus two seven five plus two six six nine hundred and sixty three thousand dollars. And you might think we're done because we've added material labor and overhead. We've got one last step, and the problem is these half finished units. We want the cost of everything that we finished manufacturing in the period. There's some stuff that's not yet finished. So we got to deal with the work in process. The good news is the calculation is just the same as it was at the top. We're going to add beginning work in process to say, hey, that's more stuff that I've manufactured this year because if it was half finished at the beginning of the year, it'll be done in, during the year. But the stuff that's half finished at the end of the year shouldn't count. So I deduct that ending work in process out. So we're adding beginning work in process and we're deducting, uh, let's do pink maybe? I don't know what color. Um, here they are. We're adding the beginning work in process. We're going to deduct the ending work in process. So again, this will be a plus and this one will be a minus. Let's do it. So to our total manufacturing cost, we add begin, not beginning, I'll give it a date, uh, whip inventory January 1st 2025 and uh, that number was $31,000. We subtotal here so I get $994,000. This subtotal doesn't have a name you can leave it blank or just write the word subtotal. <laughs> we deduct whip inventory this is December 31st, 2025. And our ending WIP inventory is there. It's $20,000. So that brings us down to this total, 974. And that is our cost of goods manufactured. And that is what this statement is all about. That gets a double underline because it's a bottom line. We also want dollar signs to be at the top of each column. So there's two columns here, one column there, one column there, and a dollar sign beside anything double underlined on a statement. So we've got ourselves a good title. We've got ourselves a good schedule of cost of goods manufactured. And remember what this is serving. These one, two, threes aren't actually on the schedule. Uh, we want to know what our stuff costs, and this helps us track our costs. And as you're going to see soon, it also helps us figure out our profit, our net income, because we need to know what the cost of the goods that we sold was to figure out our profits. So we will do that soon enough. In the next video, we'll prepare a schedule of cost of goods sold. And in the following video, an income statement. That's all for this video. Stay tuned for our next one. Bye for now.